we've covered what a file is and how to uh, get to them using using a path let's talk about how um, we can use that in python and there's a really neat module called pathlib now this is only available in python 3 4 or beyond um, but i'm hoping that you're using python 3 anyway so if you're not and you're using python 2 well it's I'm really, really sorry for you, but this class is designed around Python 3, and that's where we're going to kind of focus, and we're going to talk about this really neat module. Um, now, we are going to learn about how to create paths using Pathlib, um, what CWD and home paths are, and how to access them using Pathlib. We're going to talk about how to iterate over parent directories, um, and then iterate over the children within a directory and kind of what parent and children are and what that means. Um, and then finally, we're going to talk about creating and deleting um, a file that's in there. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive um, overview of what Python or the Python Pathlib is. So I really recommend that you um, check out Gear Arn's uh, article in realpython.com uh, that's titled Python 3's Pathlib Module, Taming the File System. And so let's get started on Pathlib. Working with Pathlib, the first thing you actually need to do is import the Pathlib library. And you do that by literally typing in import and then Pathlib. Now, we've done this before importing. We've imported random. We've also imported uh, math before. And what you do is when you import that, that now brings in the Pathlib library um, into your ability to use it. And the workhorse of the Pathlib library is the path object. And you use that by doing the pathlib.path, and then you pass in the path that you want to do. So here's a relative path that we've passed into here of just path to the, and then file.extension, right? And this is actually a, a Unix um, uh, path that I passed in. Um, I actually created this on my Mac, which was using the, the Unix one. So let's give you an example of how this would work. So I'm on a Windows machine. So I'm going to type in import pathlib in here, and then um, pathlib dot path and do the same thing path to the file dot ext like that and what we get now is a windows path so you'll notice that it's a little bit different now in path in um, in windows we could do the backwards ones um, the different uh, the instead of the forward slash the backward slash but there's going to be an issue because it actually um, renders this a little bit differently um, or it, it reads this a little bit differently um, and before i execute this see how this t is bolded and the t is bolded here well when you do a backward slash t that's actually saying to the string do a tab character right and the backward slash f does another special character um, and so when I run this is actually going to give me um, a weird error and you can see so there's actually a path then a the slash T's kind of worked there but the slash F threw in this kind of weird thing so to make this work what you have to do is you actually put a R in front of that and then that changes it to the proper um, path there for you and that's how you kind of convert those so um, if we needed to do a um, a full path like this using um, the backwards that we're used to in Windows, then you'd have to put that R in there, right? So you could do something like this, users, home, right, documents, something like that, right? And then that would be the path that it takes for that as well. So that's how you operate that in, in Windows when working with that. So just remember that if you're working with that in Windows, to use, um, if you want to use the backward slash, then you need to put the R in front of the string. All the examples that we're going to have in here um, and showing you, I'm going to be using the forward slashes here, um, which will work in Windows. You don't have to use um, the backward slash when working with Pathlib. Now, when you're working um, with opening files and you're not using Pathlib, then you do need to make sure you're doing the backwards um, slash properly that's in there. So um, the next thing we want to talk about is the 
um, current working directory and the home methods. So the CWD and the home, right? So I've got a, um, a, a path lib here. And by calling the dot CWD method in there, it'll return your current working directory. So my current working directory, when I'm operating this, is actually my home directory. And you can see it's inside my documents and repos. And then our root folder for this um, class, and then our lecture material, and then actually this modules folder that's in there. Now, my home is just simply the user's home. Now, when we would do that in, let's see what that looks like in Windows, right? So if I do pathlib dot path dot home like this, then it's just our C users. Now, when you do home or current working directory, it will always give you the absolute path and not the relative path that's in there. Okay. So that's how you access the current working directory and the home directory um, within pathlib that's in there. Now, parent directories are the directories that are directly above that path. So if um, we were working, say, the current working directory that we had before, what we want to do is iterate over the parent folders that it took that we took to get to that path, right? And that's all the way up to the root folder. So when we look at the previous one, we saw that our current working directory was actually in that um, nine file IO directory, right? So I've taken a parent um, or used the parents uh, method and we can iterate over that and print out the parent. And it goes from the closest folder or the, the closest parent to the furthest parent. So you've got your parent, and then your grandparent, and then your great grandparent, and then your great great grandparent, all the way until you get to the very, very beginning that's there. Right. And so that's the way that that works in there. And you iterate that over the dot parents um, uh, method that's, um, or actually, uh, that's an attribute of the path. Um, the path uh, uh, directory or the current working directory that's in there. Um, oh, and then I, that'll work with any path. Um, so we're just using current working directory for this example, but you can throw in any type of path and it'll it'll give you the, par the parents that are in there as well. Now we can create files and also check for file existence um, by uh, um, printing out or by uh, using the dot exists. Um, uh, in there. Um, and so what we do is let's create a path. Um, we've got the current working directory, um, and then we've added this forward slash and then test.txt. Now the forward slash, this operator of a path adds the, the path that you pass into it, um, to it, um, adds it into there. So our current working directory, if you'll remember, was this guy right here. And then once we do this forward slash, what it does is it now appends this path to it. Now we just done we just did a specifically a um, file or yeah a file that's in there. But let's say we wanted to add a folder into there as well. So let's just say there's a test folder like that. Now we could enter that in and make sure my path lib is imported. And now you can see. Um, whoops, there we go. So now you can see this is actually adding to this. So my current working directory actually changed because I'm on a different machine and running this. And I appended a test slash test dot um, txt in there. Now, um, we're going to move this back like this. And then we can check to see if that file exists by doing the dot file exists. So the test dot txt actually does not exist in there. So when we run exists on that, it's going to return a false. So let's fix that. Let's create a file. We can do that by using the touch method. Now the touch method is um, something very common to uh, terminals. If you've ever used a terminal, you would usually use a touch and then the path to the, to the file. And what it does is it creates a zero byte file, an empty file. It's got nothing inside of there. All it has is just a name that's in there. So when we do the new file path that we've done before, we do dot touch, and then we check for its existence. We see that it did actually get created in there. 
And now we can check to see um, if that path is actually a file. So we do that by using the dot is underscore file method in there. So to recap, if we want to check to see if a file exists, we use the dot exists method. If we wanted to create a new file, then we use the dot touch file that's in there. And then finally, if we want to check if a file is actually a file or a path is it actually a file, we use the dot file method that's in there. Now, we are going to cover um, how to add contents to um, Python files or files that are created in Python a little bit later. And you don't necessarily need to use the touch, um, the dot touch to create the file before you can start working with it in Python. Um, we'll show you that when we start the creation of a file, if it's not already created and we're writing to the file, then it automatically creates that file for you. Um, so, but if this is kind of a neat little thing that you can use to create a new file, if you just want to create an empty file um, first, that's in there. Um, deleting files, we use the dot unlink method. So we've got that same file path. You'll notice that it was created beforehand. Now we do the dot unlink and we check to see if it exists and that is false. So that's about it for pathlib for this this lesson. We've learned about how to create files, how to create paths using pathlib and reference them to check if they actually exist, um, to delete the file, um, how to iterate over the parents of, of a directory and work with it in that way. Um, again, I really recommend you check out that article that uh, gives you kind of an exhaustive uh, in-depth look of, of what pathlib is and the power that it's uh, a part of it. Um, in our, our next video, we're going to do um, an assignment related to uh, working with Pathlib.